So today we're going to look at a case study. We had a 41-year-old female who came in the clinic. Uh, she was an avid runner and she was training for the Broad Street Run. She had been complaining of heel pain and upon diagnosis by our physician, Dr. Shu, uh, she had plantar fasciitis. Um, she had been wearing orthotics for years and often claimed she didn't know why she was wearing their orthotics because she really felt no difference. So at her initial evaluation, we tested her barefoot and we tested her with shoes as well as with shoes and orthotics. And in the results, we found that her best gait pattern and where she was most balanced was actually barefoot and that the orthotics, which is in this column here, actually elevated her numbers and elevated the imbalances in her body. So we decided, um, along with her physical therapist, myself and the doctor, that we would train her in a barefoot and see how uh, she progressed. This is looking at her swing phase um, at initial evaluation. Her swing phase, this is actually her barefoot number. This is um, with shoes and this is with shoes with orthotics. So she was actually doing well. She was actually more efficient in her swing phase, which means there's less contact time on the ground. She's taking a further stride when she was barefoot. Looking at her stride length, same thing here. Um, what was interesting was her shorter stride was actually in her barefoot. And when she put on the orthotics, she tried to take a little bit strong, uh, longer stride, but then that threw off her kinetic chain while she was walking. So we knew that ideally we would have to keep a shorter stride length while working her and um, that maybe her body was best functioning with that shorter stride. So treatment plan, um, everything that we did, we cut her off of running initially and then we informed her to stop wearing her orthotics and all the exercises were trained in either barefoot or with shoes without the orthotics. We tested her on a daily basis. Every time she came into the clinic here, she hopped on the OptiGate. We did a 30 second walking test and to see if we were making changes on a daily um, or even just within an office visit to see um, after a chiropractic adjustment or exercises if we were making any immediate change and if she was able to hold that change from one appointment to the next. As you can see here, OptiGate allows us to um, neatly and efficiently organize the results and track them. So everything, every time you get tested here, um, we save those results and store them for later use. Um, through her program, we now started to collect average data and <clears throat> this allowed us to see if there were changes or if um, she was kind of like in her groove and walking um, steadily. So in her stance phase, as you can see through the program, it kind of stayed the same midway through and then at the end it started to tamper down again. Uh, what was interesting, by this appointment, she was actually pain free and getting ready to train to start running again. Um, double support phase, now this allows us to see how efficient you are. If both feet are in contact on the ground while you're walking, you're not efficient, you're not really moving anywhere. You're in a stationary position. So the more you can decrease that double stance phase, um, the more ground you're covering at a time. So at, initial at the initial visit, she was at 0.362 seconds on average with both feet on the ground. By the end, she was down to 0.274 seconds. Small variance, but it could make a big difference in your care. Um, her discharge stats, um, again, what we were looking at here was um, overall balances. This left to right difference is how much difference there is left side to right side. If you come out with a negative percentage, it means it's your right side that's fav favoring it. If it's a positive, it's your left side. Ideally, we want these numbers below 3%. If you're under 3%, that means your body's pretty well balanced. There's always going to be some slight variance that we can't control, um, but this at least gets us in a ballpark range. So when she came out, she was well under that 3%. Um, down here in the gait cycles and the acceleration, that all stayed uh, the same throughout her program because she was on a treadmill walking at 2.7 miles per hour every time.